Hey guys, welcome back. It's like, uh, I don't know, July 8th or something like that. And right now, oh, sorry. Lens was a little dirty. Right now I am uh, just really busy working a lot of hours, pretty much since I came back from my trip to Colorado and out west. So that's why there hasn't really been a whole lot of video. That and I really don't have anything to bring you guys right now. It's just I've, I've been working so much and that's that's really all I've been doing. Working, working, working. But this morning I managed to get a little bit of work done on the John Deere hit and miss engine, the Model E horse and a half hit and miss engine that Rudy and I are going to put together. Uh, I soaked it down pretty pretty heavily with oven cleaner and I pressure washed it. My neighbor, neighbor let me borrow his pressure washer and um, pressure washed it and everything looks pretty good on it. We did know already that there was a, um, a repaired crack on the bottom of the cylinder so hopefully that doesn't cause any issues. Uh, I believe I'm not sure if there's more leaks but this fuel tank has been repaired. There's an old brazing spot on the bottom. But other than that, the, the engine looks really clean and pretty nice. So it's not perfectly clean, but it's 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 not bad either. And since you can still read the original John Deere on the side, well I don't know if it's the original, but it has a, a good patina on it. So I might end up leaving this just the way it is because I don't know it's kind of cool to see you know old and rusty running at shows you know anybody can sandblast or wire wheel anything and put a nice coat of paint on it but to, to keep things in nice original operating condition is is pretty cool I think but that's uh, that's what we've been working on here. And there's really not much to film, you know, soak it down with oven cleaner and then pressure wash it off inside and out. So um, inside the shed, as you can see, it's it's definitely got a lot of stuff in it. I still have, you know, more stuff to bring in that goes up on the shelves up here. So I've just been working so much that I haven't really been able to do that. You know, it's it's just it's the nature of the beast right now, but um oh this is the the piston for the the hit and miss engine here i guess it's probably i don't know three to three and a half inch bore something like that but um that's that's in really good shape we've already pulled the insert bearings out of it so we shouldn't have any problems with that um let's see what else can i tell you oh over the 4th, I spent some time with some friends, Sean Jacobson, Matt Horseman, Dan Workala, and Tony Manley. They invited me over to kind of a steam up for the 4th of July. So I got just a couple short clips from that and a few pictures that I'll, I'll put in the video here. But if the mailman comes around today, or mail lady, we will have my early birthday present showing up and I'm gonna leave that here for the last part of the video so check out the couple clips and photos that I have from the steam up here I believe it was Sean's 65 horse case uh, steam traction engine and then there was an advanced Rumley but I'm not sure on the horsepower but I know they just finished the restoration of it so the K65 they finished a couple years ago, and then this Advanced Rumley they just finished this spring. So, next on their docket is a Case 80 horse, and I am hoping that we can do a video series on that. 
I can't make any promises just because, you know, my schedule is different from a lot of people's. So I'll try to get over there and film when I can when they start on that. But hopefully, hopefully we can bring a make a series out of it. But check out these videos and these pictures, and then for the last part of the video, I'll kind of show you my. <laughs> I guess it's my my own birthday present to myself. So. Check it out. Yeah, but this has nice everything. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I cut the tape on the box, but I haven't opened it yet. So let's see what happens here. And you'll have to forgive me. Remember, Domino has got my all my camera setups. So this is my old GoPro with no external microphone. But let's take a look and see what's inside. Double taped. <laughs> kind of hard to do one handed. Yeah, say hello. Say hello. Could be in here. Okay, a little easier to manage now. I cut kind of all the tape off of here, but I'm not sure what you guys think this is, but I am pretty excited about this. Any guesses yet? Look at that. Yes, sir. That is a three inch Lunkenheimer. 
steam whistle. Now, I'm not sure what engines or what, you know, as far as traction engines go or stationary engines, I'm not sure what a 3 inch Lunkenheimer would be used on, but it does look like something that would be used on a traction engine for sure. So, the plan is to get this plumbed up and allow it to be used with my air compressor. So this is fully rebuilt, ready to go. And it's been set up to run a maximum of 150, 155 PSI, something like that. So now we have to run to the hardware store and get, I believe we need one inch, one inch pipe. Then we gotta get some reducers so that I can put an air chuck on it and um, go from there. So. Stay tuned guys, I'm pretty excited about this. Okay guys, I'll kind of go through, oh, it's kind of weird talking with these uh, earplugs in. Kind of go through what I did here to plumb it in. I just used my regular air hose with a quarter inch air chuck. I used a swivel just because, you know, this hose is hanging free, so I'd rather have it swiveling than kind of putting a bind by bending around and stuff. I had to get a couple reducers. Um, I got to correct myself before. This isn't a one inch fitting, it's a three or a three quarter inch. And then I just mounted this system up on the wall, 12 inch long by three quarter pipe with a T in case I decide to get another whistle so that. You know, if I get a larger or smaller whistle, I'll have two different tones because this is only a single chime whistle. And uh, that's pretty much it. It's set up to run 160 PSI max. My compressor goes to 150, so we should be good. But I'm going to put these earplugs in. It's not easy to do one-handed, but we'll give it a shot. And I don't know how well this camera is going to do with the audio, but let's try and give it a little, a little toot. <laughs> Works pretty good. I'm satisfied. <laughs> I did burp it just a little bit without any earphone or earplugs in and I it probably would be okay if I was standing back here but standing right up next to it too loud way too loud so always wear ear protection if you're if you're gonna be playing with these whistles um, if you're wondering where I got this it was from Shoals engine shop in North Carolina so Feel free to check out their website. I'll put the link in the description below. And um, that's all I got for you. I hope you guys had a great 4th of July, safe 4th of July. You got to spend it with friends and family, have some good food, and hopefully you still got all your digits. So that's all I've got. Thanks for watching, guys, and hopefully uh, the next video will be some more tractor stuff. So take care.